All right, what you're looking at is my Weller solder station. And I know most of you guys have temper con temperature controlled ones. And I should get rid of this old piece of junk and it's ancient. Blah, 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 blah. Well, it is temperature controlled. And you probably look at one of these and you say, well, is it temperature controlled? Got an on off switch. There's no, there's no temperature setting anywhere. All right, well, if you get into it, Here's a, here's a, here's one of the tips, brand new, that's what it looks like, and uh, on the back of each, back of each tip, I got this unplugged so I don't burn myself, okay, you undo this, and out comes the tip, and on the back of the tip, there's a number, and if you look on the chart, it'll tell you what temperature this tip is, now you say, well, how can a tip rem, reg, uh, regulate temperature. Well, it's very simple. This thing on the back is nickel. And you probably don't know, but I'll tell you, nickel will not stick to a magnet when it reaches a certain temperature. So if you put a certain amount of, of nickel back here, a different size um, clog or, or, or a, a ferro, ferro, whatever you want to call this blob back here, it's nickel. And when it reaches a certain temperature, it won't stick to a magnet. Well, well, how does that work? Well, inside here, if you listen, you might hear it clicking. There's a switch. Now, notice the tip. The tip won't fall out. Why? Because it's it's sitting on a magnet. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, the magnet, the magnet works the switch. So when you turn this on, the magnet gets attracted to the piece of nickel you knew that right okay so a magnet sticks to a piece of nickel but as the nickel heats up the magnet no longer will stick to the to the um, to the piece of nickel and you'll hear you'll feel this click in your hand and that's how it regulates the temperature oh okay, it's a very simple system now and when you put your tip on something and it draws the heat away, immediately you'll feel the switch click and the magnet touches the tip and it transfers the heat. There's a, there's a heater down in here and it transfers the heater of uh, a, a heat up into the tip. So this is temperature regulated. Of course, uh, if you want to change the temperature real quick, uh, you're going to have to change the tip. Okay, but you got to remember, this thing came out 45 years ago. Okay, and this tip is grounded uh, through three wire plugs. So if you worked on MOSFET and stuff, this tip doesn't get charged up. It didn't have um, ac accidental AC uh, flowing through the tip like some cheaper uh, soldering irons sometimes broke down and you would have AC sitting on the tip. And if it, that circuit board had any kind of ground in it and you're going along, you're burning parts out. Okay, but I just wanted to show you that. Okay, temperature regulated, 45 years old. And uh, I do have one of these guys back here, hot air. You know, I can do it the modern way. But you know it's quicker? To use this thing, because it stays, it stays hot. You know, with this, when you put it back on the handle, uh, it goes to sleep. It, it's a different system. And basically it's for removing IC chips. I use both units. But let me tell you the story. This has a story hooked to it. Now, I worked in the Radio Shack. And there was these two guys that come in. And they were trying to start their own company up. And they were into bug detection equipment. And what they would do is they'd buy somebody's piece of equipment, take it apart, figure out how it was made, and then they'd produce it at a cheaper cost. So they started getting me involved. And I started telling them how certain things were made. So uh, the guy says to me, we, I need you to make me a telephone. And uh, what it is, is the person could be outside. Now, this is way, way back. You're going to say, well, they got those. Blah, 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 blah. They're only like 20 bucks. Way, way back, the telephone company was very weird. They didn't want anything on their lines. And then that started to change. A company started to come out with wireless phones. Well, I was in it before those companies. Okay. So what it came down to was they wanted a box you hooked to the phone. Now this rich guy could be outside sitting on his veranda or whatever, and the phone, he'd hear the phone ring in the house, 
and he could turn on a walkie-talkie and the person would say hello and then he pushed the talk switch he'd say hello back and he could have a conversation real quick and if he thought the conversation was more important he could get up out of his chair and go in the house and pick the phone up that's what the box was made for now these guys strung me along I worked for a full month designing the thing and I'm gonna tell you I used the radio amateurs handbook uh, in there, they show you how to make a um, uh, voice op voice activated uh, relay. And between that, and they show you how to do a phone patch, the word phone patch. And you use inductors. And I use the little transformers. And your phasing is slightly off. Because if you try to talk onto a phone line and the phase is a certain way, it'll trigger the voice operated switch when you don't want it triggered. So you use phasing. You have different phases. The phone comes in, the phone line comes in, and it gets changed to two different phases. One phase trans triggers the voice-operated uh, relay, and then the second phase coming back out of phase goes back out onto the phone line with your answer. Okay, so the incoming signal, incoming voice, has to be different than the outgoing voice, or the voice-operated relay will start chattering. Okay, so I saw the solution to it in the Radio Amateurs Handbook, and I built this box, and now I'm waiting to hear these from these guys, and I put some pressure on these guys, and he shows up, and, and he's telling me he's having trouble raising the funds. I said, you owe me over $1,000. Well, that's a lot of money. I said, no, it's not a lot of money. I said, I worked a whole month on this box and wired it all up. I showed you it works. It'll work with any walkie-talkie on a certain frequency. So I've done my job. I want my money. So he comes up with like $175 or whatever. So um, I started to leave the radio show. He goes, where are you going? And I said, I'm going down to the parts place. So uh, he goes to me, oh, we, we could want to see what they got there. So he goes with me. And as soon as I come through the door, I saw this. This is the actual weller from Burger Electronics on Watsess, the corner of Watsessing and Bloomfield Avenue in Bloomfield. So I saw this. I don't know how much this was. I took the part at $175 and I bought this. I also bought, uh, this is sort of what's left over. I modified this. This is a pan of ice. And look up pan of ice. And this is an Olivetti uh, clamp that holds a CRT in the bank years ago it would hold the CRT on the on the table it's got like a clamp on it okay but I bought the pan of ice and the, the the solder iron station and whatever amount of money the guy gave me it was almost all gone there was some change left so we're leaving he's all upset that he gave me a hundred whatever 150 175 and now it's all gone how can you just spend that kind of money I said look dude I said uh I've been waiting to buy a, a temperature regulator soldering iron and I wanted a pan of ice to hold whatever you're soldering. And he, he's just he's just lost. He never he hasn't handled $175, $150, whatever, in such a long time that it was like I was throwing money away. So he leaves and the other guy doubles back to the radio shack and he's talking to me. He goes, You won't believe how much begging he had to do from these guys to get that money that you just pissed away. I pissed away? I said, what are you freaking nuts? I said, I bought a temperature regulated soldering iron and a vice to hold whatever I'm soldering. I said, that's part of my trade. I finally got the money and I bought it, right? Well, he had to go beg for that money. I said, yeah, I guess I'm not going to see the thousand dollars he owes me. Well, we have to, we have to make so many units now and sell them and out of the profit. I go, oh, I said, stop right there. I've gone down that road. With one of the guys that works in the radio shack. You know, we're going to go halves on 144 antennas. And then uh, uh, he, he's going to get a discount. We're getting a discount because we're buying 144. I get to the place. He don't. The guy I'm going with doesn't have any money at all. I buy 144 uh, antennas, a gross. And then uh, he, wants, he wants them from me at the discount price. So he can sell them in front of the radio shack store. And make a profit on the fact that I got the lower price because I bought 144. Uh, you're just as I told him you're just as crazy as that nutbag. I said he's a business student and he's a nutbag. Okay, I bought 144 antennas in order to get the discount. Now he thinks he's going to buy them at that 
take take what I paid and divide 144 into that, and then I'm going to sell him those antennas at that price, and then he's going to resell them. I said, he, his money wasn't involved in, in the transaction at all. I said, I guess I'm not going to get the money from the telephone thing. Well, what happened was they had my um, prototype, and the kid that was working with me, with this guy, uh, he called me up. He says, I can't copy it. What What did you do? I said, oh, I said, I'm good at that. I said, uh, uh, there's wires underneath the ICs. What? Yeah, I said, uh, I, I would have to put an IC in a piece of perf board, and I'd run some wires underneath it and then put the chip in, knowing that if anybody tried to copy the thing, they'd be screwed. And he was screwed. See, they thought they were going to have me build a prototype, and then they were going to copy it. And uh, now they're, they're in the store, and, and then uh, uh, one of the guys got back to me. He says, you know, they're, they're in their store uh, trying to find someone as smart as you so they can, he can work on your prototype. I said, good luck. Good luck. I said, the most frustrating thing in the world is trying to re-engineer something, especially when the person has hid some of the wires in wacky places. And I knew how to do that. And uh, those guys just disappeared. They didn't come into the store anymore. But I actually built a uh, this box that had a, a walkie-talkie in it. It had a, um, a voice-operated switch. And it had this, um, what we call it, um, a, a phasing uh, transformers. And this, the person would, oh, and also had a ring, a ring circuit. The person, when the th on the third ring, the unit would pick up the phone line. And then the person would say hello. It would get transmitted outside. And then when the person would answer back, uh, it would it, it, it worked great, okay? Just like the, the wireless phones later on that come out for $59 and then they got as low as $29. But I did it way before because as soon as the phone company started to allow people to add their own phones to the line, I was right there at the Radio Shack. And we were trying to explain that to the customers that you can now buy a phone and hook it to the line and they really don't care anymore. And, and I was, you know, jumped right on it, built this box, and they were going around demonstrating it. And everybody that they demonstrated to wanted to keep it for a while. See, they, they, everybody was playing the same game. I was already gone. I, I didn't get my $1,000, but I did get the solder iron station and the pan of ice. That's all I got out of the whole thing. Months of work. Okay? And they kept the prototype. And they never even paid me for the parts for the prototype. But that's the type. That's why I have this attitude. Because I've seen stuff that you're never going to see. Okay, I know how stuff works. Now you you look at this thing and you you'd say to yourself, oh, it's just a solder iron. You know, voltage comes out of here and goes out. No, it's temperature regulated. But they did it in such a cool way 45 years ago. Well, now yeah, Weller makes a temperature regulated one, and it works differently. It's probably got a thermistor somewhere, or how, however they do it. They might use current. I don't know. But this one has you know a tip, and on the back of the tip there's a number. And if you look it up, it tells you the temperature of this tip. And uh, it's a piece of nickel. And uh, there are certain metals, when they get cherry red, they won't stick to a magnet. So if you're into tempering, uh, let me just show you. I do have a magnet here. But there you go. I'll turn it upside down. There you go. Okay? The magnet will stick to that piece of... And this is... I don't know what this is. That probably sticks too, but... Right here, it just lets it go. And there's a, a little tiny, mic, uh, not a micro switch, a little tiny uh, contact switch up in here. And there's a uh, nichrome wire up in here. That heats this section. And then when that magnet gets attracted to the nickel because it's cooled off, a switch goes on and reheats this. So you hear this thing clicking on and off when you're running it. And that's why. I probably You probably noticed it if you have one. Never thought about it. It's like I showed you the... Um, the uh, fan in a computer and it's got a hole sensor in it and you probably never would have thought about it but I think about things that other people don't think about I see it I go you know that's a really good good solution you know 45 years ago and they had this maybe even before that and uh, you know people are like oh I got this new regulator one I right, right, right. what'd you build with it uh, well I'm gonna get to that all right you're not you're not this thing has seen more TVs more radios and it's still, this is still the original. Uh, I have an extra one of these uh, assemblies. And 
you know, I just take care of it. Oh, and the sponges are really hard to find. And uh, this sponge, um, it's not regular sponge. It's a little bit different. It doesn't melt when the soldering iron hits it. Uh, some type of uh, fiber stuff. And I found um, on, on eBay, they had a, a real well-known number. And I looked at the size. I said, you know what? I bet I can cut that. And it'll drop. And it did. I cut it and dropped it right in. Because the sponges for this thing, uh, if you can find them, they want like 12 bucks a sponge. That's a little steep for me. So I figured out I could I get two sponges for less money and a lifetime supply. So now I bought enough of these tips, enough sponge, and I have um, uh, an extra one of these uh, heating units. So I should be good to the rest of my life. Okay, and then I just bought another spool of solder, uh, the old-fashioned uh, lead, lead uh, what's it, tin and lead, uh, 6040 was the old number. Ah, that's old school. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's, that's what I use because 6040, uh, it's got lead in it. Um, I don't let little kids touch it. But in other words, the flow onto pins is so much better than the modern solders. I tried a few of them. There might be one really good one out there. I know a lot of people, oh, you got to try this one. You gotta, I'm, 60, I'm a 6040 guy, okay? I've been soldering with it. I know what to expect from it. That's the way I roll, okay? I think that's it. All right, that's it.